Shruti or Shruti Sanskrit, Shruti IAST, Shruti, IPA, T in Sanskrit means, that which is heard, and refers to the body of most authoritative, ancient religious texts comprising the central canon of Hinduism. It includes the four Vedas including its four types of embedded texts, the Samhitas, the Brahmanas, the Aranyakas, and the early Upanishads. Srutas have been variously described as a revelation through Anubhava, direct experience, or of primordial origins realized by ancient rishis. In Hindu tradition, they have been referred to as Aparusya Orthalus. The Sruti texts themselves assert that they were skillfully created by rishis, sages, after inspired creativity, just as a carpenter builds a chariot. All six orthodox schools of Hinduism accept the authority of Sruti, but many scholars in these schools denied that the Srutis are divine. Nastika heterodox philosophies such as the Karvakas did not accept the authority of the Srutis and consider them to be flawed human works. Shruti Sruti differs from other sources of Hindu philosophy, particularly Smriti which is remembered", or textual material. These works span much of the history of Hinduism, beginning with the earliest known texts and ending in the early historical period with the later Upanishads. Of the Srutas, the Upanishads alone are widely known, and the central ideas of the Upanishadic Srutas are at the spiritual core of Hindus. Etymology <inaudible> <inaudible> The Sanskrit word, sruti, iast, sruti, ipa, t, has multiple meanings depending on context. It means, hearing, listening, a call to, listen to a speech, any form of communication that is aggregate of sounds news, report, rumor, noise, hearsay. The word is also found in ancient geometry texts of India, where it means, the diagonal of a tetragon or hypotenuse of a triangle and is a synonym of kana. The word sruti is also found in ancient Indian music literature, where it means, "...a particular division of the octave, a quarter tone or interval." Out of 22 enumerated major tones, minor tones, and semitones. In music, it refers the smallest measure of sound a human being can detect, and the set of 22 sruti and 44 half shruti, stretching from about 250 hertz to 500 hertz, is called the shruti octave. In scholarly works on Hinduism, sruti refers to ancient Vedic texts from India. Manir Williams traces the contextual history of this meaning of sruti as, which has been heard or communicated from the beginning, sacred knowledge that was only heard and verbally transmitted from generation to generation, the Veda, from earliest rishis sages in Vedic tradition. In scholarly literature, sruti is also spelled as shruti. <laughs> Topic. Distinction between sruti and smirti Smriti literally, that which is remembered, refers to a body of Hindu texts usually attributed to an author, traditionally written down but constantly revised, in contrast to Srutas the Vedic literature considered authorless, that were transmitted verbally across the generations and fixed. Smriti is a derivative secondary work and is considered less authoritative than Sruti in Hinduism. Sruti are fixed and its originals preserved better, while each Smriti text exists in many versions, with many different readings. Smritis were considered fluid and freely rewritten by anyone in ancient and medieval Hindu tradition. Both Srutis and Smritis represent categories of texts of different traditions of Hindu philosophy. According to Gokul Narang, the Sruti are asserted to be of divine origin in the mythologies of the Puranas. In contrast, states Roy Perrett, ancient and medieval Hindu philosophers have denied that sruti are divine, authored by God. The Mimamsa tradition, famous in Hindu tradition for its sruti exegetical contributions, radically critiqued the notion and any relevance for concepts such as author, the sacred text. Or divine origins of sruti, the Mimamsa school claimed that the relevant question is the meaning of the sruti, values appropriate for human beings in it, and the commitment to it. Nastika philosophical schools such as the Karvakas of the first millennium BCE did not accept the authority of the srutis and considered them to be human works suffering from incoherent rhapsodies, inconsistencies, and tautologies. Smritis are considered to be human thoughts in response to the srutis. Traditionally, all smirtis are regarded to ultimately be rooted in or inspired by srutis. Texts 
The Sruti literature include the four Vedas Rigveda, Yajurveda, Samaveda. Atharvavadich of these Vedas include the following texts, and these belong to the Sruti canon Samhitas, Brahmanas, Aranyakas. Upanishads to literature of the Shakas, or schools, further amplified the material associated with each of the four core traditions. Of the above Srutas, the Upanishads are most widely known, and the central ideas of them are the spiritual foundation of Hinduism. Patrick Olivelle writes Even though theoretically the whole of Vedic corpus is accepted as revealed truth, sruti, in reality it is the Upanishads that have continued to influence the life and thought of the various religious traditions that we have come to call Hindu. Upanishads are the scriptures par excellence of Hinduism. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Role in Hindu law. Shrutis have been considered the authority in Hinduism. Smritis, including the Manumti, the Naradajmurti, and the Parasarasmurti, are considered less authoritative than Shrutis. Only three of the four types of texts in the Vedas have behavioral precepts. For the Hindu all belief takes its source and its justification in the Vedas sruti. Consequently every rule of Dharma must find its foundation in the Veda. Strictly speaking, the Samhitas do not even include a single precept which could be used directly as a rule of conduct. One can find there only references to usage which falls within the scope of Dharma. By contrast, the Brahmanas, the Aranyakas and the Upanishads contain numerous precepts which propound rules governing behavior. Bilamoria states the role of Sruti in Hinduism has been inspired by the belief in a higher natural cosmic order RTA succeeded later by the concept Dharma that regulates the universe and provides the basis for its growth, flourishing and sustenance, be that of the gods, human beings, animals and eco-formations." Levinson states that the role of Sruti and Smriti in Hindu law is as a source of guidance, and its tradition cultivates the principle that the facts and circumstances of any particular case determine what is good or bad." The later Hindu texts include fourfold sources of dharma, states Levinson, which include Atmanastushti satisfaction of one's conscience, Sadhakara local norms of virtuous individuals, Smriti and Sruti. <laughs> Topic. Legal transmission The Srutis, the oldest of which trace back to the second millennium BCE, had not been committed to writing in ancient times. These were developed and transmitted verbally, from one generation to the next, for nearly two millenniums. Almost all printed editions available in the modern era are copied manuscripts that are hardly older than 500 years. Michael Witzel explains this oral tradition as follows. The Vedic texts were orally composed and transmitted, without the use of script, in an unbroken line of transmission from teacher to student that was formalized early on. This ensured an impeccable textual transmission superior to the classical texts of other cultures. It is, in fact, something like a tape recording. Not just the actual words, but even the long lost musical tonal accent, as in Old Greek or in Japanese, has been preserved up to the present. Ancient Indians developed techniques for listening, memorization and recitation of srutas. Many forms of recitation or pathas were designed to aid accuracy in recitation and the transmission of the Vedas and other knowledge texts from one generation to the next. All hymns in each Veda were recited in this way, for example, all 1,028 hymns with 10,600 verses of the Rig Veda was preserved in this way, as were all other Vedas including the principal Upanishads, as well as the Vedangas. Each text was recited in a number of ways, to ensure that the different methods of recitation acted as a cross-check on the other. Pierre Sylvain Filiosat summarizes this as follows Samhitapatha, continuous recitation of Sanskrit words bound by the phonetic rules of euphonic combination Padapatha, a recitation marked by a conscious pause after every word, and after any special grammatical codes embedded inside the text. This method suppresses euphonic combination and restores each word in its original intended form. Kramapatha, a step by step recitation where euphonically combined words are paired successively and sequentially and then recited, for example, a hymn, Word 1, Word 2, Word 3, Word 4, would be recited as 
Word 1 Word 2 Word 2 Word 3 Word 3 Word 4 this method to verify accuracy is credited to Vedic sages Gargya and Sakalya in the Hindu tradition and mentioned by the ancient Sanskrit grammarian Panini dated to pre-Buddhism period. Krama Partha modified, the same step-by-step -step recitation as above, but without euphonic combinations or free form of each word. This method to verify accuracy is credited to Vedic sages Bhavravya and Galava in the Hindu tradition, and is also mentioned by the ancient Sanskrit grammarian Panini. Juttapatha, Devaha Partha and Gana Partha are methods of recitation of a text and its oral transmission that developed after 5th century BCE, that is after the start of Buddhism and Jainism. These methods use more complicated rules of combination and were less used. These extraordinary retention techniques guaranteed an accurate sruti, fixed across the generations, not just in terms of unaltered word order but also in terms of sound. That these methods have been effective, is testified to by the preservation of the most ancient Indian religious text, the Raveda ca. 1500 BCE. This part of a Vedic student's education was called Svadhyaya. The systematic method of learning, memorization and practice, enabled these texts to be transmitted from generation to generation with inordinate fidelity. Quotation Max Muller in an 1865 lecture stated, The idea of revelation, and I mean more particularly book revelation, is not a modern idea, nor is it an idea peculiar to Christianity. In no country, I believe, has the theory of revelation been so minutely elaborated as in India. The name for revelation in Sanskrit is Shruti, which means hearing, and this title distinguished the Vedic hymns and, at a later time, the Brahmanas also, from all other works, which however sacred and authoritative to the Hindu mind, are admitted to have been composed by human authors, but let me state at once that there is nothing in the hymns themselves to warrant such extravagant theories. In many a hymn, the author says plainly that he or his friends made it to please the gods, that he made it, as a carpenter makes a chariot RV 1 .6, or like a beautiful vesture RV 5 that he fashioned it in his heart and kept it in his mind RV 1 .1 See also Hindu law Upanishads Vedas equals equals notes <laughs>